Hey peoples, it's me Tristan, and if you remember I did this Blitzkrieg Miniatures Martyr 2 tank with the Perry Miniatures crew on it. So recently I had a chance to actually try out uh, a plastic kit. Uh, so this kit is from Rubicon Models, and it's the Stug 3. It comes with the option to build it as an early meet or late production variant. Here's what's in it. I'm not sure why they come in these plastic bags. It also comes with a decal sheet. I would have really liked to have this before I did the Martyr 2. And here's the instruction. Everything seems to be numbered. Uh, quite easy. Oh, there's like uh, red circles around the options or something. Spare road wheels can be mounted at the rear of the hull just above the energy compartment. To do so, drill two small holes from the underside. Oh, so it involves drilling and stuff. So it is actually like a model kit. I thought these were like more of a gaming kits. So let's take a look at this spruce. Wow, I'm impressed by the detail. And good strong plastic as well. None of that air fix stuff. There's even MGs. Now we can go on and start assembling this kit. Probably every one of you knows how to assemble stuff. I'm just gonna go through some of the stuff I'm doing here. There should be suggestions on in which order you should attach these. For example, when you are assembling it, you really want to attach these wheels onto the track before you attach them to the side of the hull here. Which These numbers are messed up. This should be a 3 and this should be a 2, but at least they were there. And which is really nice is, if you can see, these holes are here, actually they, they're pre-made. Also, what I really like is actually all the pieces are quite clean except for the tracks But the tracks won't really matter because the upper parts are anyways covered up quite well So yeah, I wanted to drill these holes of course. Yeah This part here says that Before you uh, glue down the main body you should uh, first glue down these two pieces in here in the middle so yeah, I glued that down and then I went forward with the top part here. So this is where it gets kind of weird. So <clears throat> as I went for the mid-war production, I picked this part here. Without even looking at the pieces here, I just look at the numbers and I cut out the pieces and I got them ready. And this was B3 on the sprue. If you look closely, this should actually have like this little bit here but B3 didn't have. So I went ahead and looked at B4, which on the sprue is actually this piece. So actually these two pieces are, the number should be changed there on the sprue, which is a silly mistake, I think. That's why you have to dry fit everything and you know, take your time building it. Let's say if I would be building three of these at the same time, if I would be just assembling by this and not really turning my attention to it, at some point I would be it doesn't go here. As for the gun piece, I went for the 7.5 centimeter. This I have to say about the Rubicon model kits. Guns are very well done. This is such a snug fit in here that actually you don't have to glue it down. You could just leave it like that and if need be you just remove it and replace it with a howitzer gun. So uh, I'm, I'm this far. Glue this hatch down before you glue this uh, the whole top part. The connection bit here isn't that like sturdy because the little peg here is quite small. And they're both down. 
Like most of the bits here are like fit in really well. I'm quite impressed with those. The last thing now we need to attach before the side skirts is the hatch. I don't want to just add the hatch. I want to add something different here as well. I got this kit from Perry Miniatures. It's the Martyr 2 Crew. He's a spotter, I guess, with binoculars and stuff. So I cut off his legs and trimmed his pants a bit to fit in here. So um, I want to add him as the commander of the tank. So in order to add the hatch upright, I'm going to have to trim this bit here. Actually, shirts and go on really well. I've always uh, liked pictures and models where people have cut up the shirts, and so I think I'm gonna do the same thing. On the left side here, I will probably take off this one here. Uh, now I just need to cut off the first bit here. Gonna bend it off like this. This covers up perfectly the little bits underneath, so I don't have to worry about not painting them. Uh, I think I've come to the end of the assembly process, and, and I really like the look of this tank. So those of you interested in uh, the scale, for example, this is a Blitzkrieg Miniatures Martyr 2 tank. I think they fit pretty well. Here are the two trucks from Warlord Games. And I believe they they also are in this in the right scale. But before I paint it, I still have one thing to do, uh, one scale comparison, and I think that scale comparison will be the. Uh Nii pikad tüübid nagu mina siit täda olukorrast nagu eriti välja ei tulegi. Assaf. Oh, no nüüd on teine küsimus, kuidas ma siit välja saan. Hüppe. Siin on elge kuulikild on näiteks siit torudaks sellest laest. James Bondi Kader. Yeah. And voila, the paint job is done. And here are some Warlord minis next to it, just to show you the scale. So I went with a quite a simple uh, camo scheme, nothing too major. Compared to the Martyr 2, there is a big difference because I got uh, a retractive green for the green parts. Here I used Goblin Green. Some people mentioned that it might be a bit too light of a green, and I do agree. I think this looks way better. Bottom part here is uh, unfinished, and as you can see under this shirt, I've also not painted, but it doesn't matter because you can't see it anyways when it's on the table. The commander, I did a quite a simple paint job on it, just some uh, grays and using white paint and detail brushes to get on some uh, insignias and uh, ranking. But I tried to keep it fairly simple. Previous part you saw that I visited uh, the war museum and I had a chance actually to get in one of the stocks. After that I understood that this is actually wrong because the commander can't be in this position because he would have to stand on something like a box or a, another person or just uh, entirely balance himself on his arms that are on this uh, rim here so that's kind of unreal and also I think Perry crewman is a bit too big for this tank compared to the martyr I really wanted to keep it less busy and I think I've achieved that another thing that really really adds to this kit are the decals the so they come in this plastic wrapping. Quite frankly, these are 
probably the best decals I've uh, I've I've used because these are matte decals. For some reason, like every other decal I've used before, they are all glossy. The transparent parts around the numbers they kind of disappeared, and now with the matte varnish, it's almost non-existent. So the transfers look really, really good on these. Other things about this kit is that even though there were a few mistakes on this uh, assembly guide. I think the assembly went reasonably well and it was uh, enjoyable. Out of 10 tanks I would give this uh, 8 tanks. Yes. Uh, thanks for Jamie Trenchard for uh, offering me this chance to paint up one of these tanks and I'm, I'm very grateful for that. Anywho, thank you for watching, keep it safe and I will talk to you in the next one.